Netflix's adaption of Andrei Swarovski's Witcher series of books is being touted by mainstream media as the next Game of Thrones. In this video, I'm going to discuss this and if it truly could pick up the torch Game of Thrones left behind. Now, my introduction to the Witcher series came from the video games by CD Projekt Red that act as a continuation from the story in the books. I played Witcher 2 first and went back and played the first game after. It was on the wait for The Witcher 3 I first read the books. On paper, it is a lot in common with A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones. They both do share a medieval fantasy setting as well as many similarities in theme and tone. But once you actually delve into it into more detail, two stories and worlds are in fact very different and something I think mainstream media has overlooked in a big way. In this video, I'm not going to go into massive detail about the actual story of The Witcher, so if you're worried about spoilers, you don't need to worry. I will make a video at a later date about the story, but what I want to do is talk about this and why this comparison is being made and why it doesn't really help the Netflix show. I also want this video to be for people who are worried about spoilers but are interested in the show due to the Game of Thrones comparison being made. The first thing to consider is that both Game of Thrones and The Witcher are, yes, both set in a fantasy setting, but I feel they are two very different settings at the same time. Both Westeros and the world of The Witcher feel like very big and real places, but the way in which they are shown and used in the story is very different. In both, you do get to see the world's darker sides and the gritty realities of war, life and death. However, in A Song of Ice and Fire, you're looking at it through the eyes of often someone of high birth, where in The Witcher, you're an outcast monster hunter, a mutant, a pariah, and because of this, you really get to see the struggle of life during this time period and take on a lot of the moral issues of the time. Some which still have parallels in modern society, but so both give a very different look at the reality of the world. The Witcher also delves into the mystic and the magical a lot more than Game of Thrones. It's a much bigger part of the plot, with sorceresses and sorcerers powerful figures in politics, some even like the right-handed advisors to kings. Yes, magic is part of A Song of Ice and Fire books and Game of Thrones, but thus far has only played a smaller role in Game of Thrones the show itself, ignoring much of the magic and mystical elements from the book. If a more classic portrait of magic use and magic users is not your thing, then it does play a big part in The Witcher, but the magic of the world is of a much more natural force and part of nature, giving it a more grounded approach that makes sense rather than straight up classic magic fantasy tropes. The Witcher will also focus on monsters a lot more than Game of Thrones, with the world still full of them. Geralt being a Witcher, a monster hunter, means that in the early short stories, many of them actually focus on him taking contracts to kill these monsters. We see a lot of different kinds of monsters and cursed people in The Witcher, and what I like is the twist they put on classic monsters such as vampires. It puts his own spin on it in a way. And a lot of the monsters that are in The Witcher are kind of based off myth and legend from, from Eastern European culture. In Game of Thrones, there are some monsters, such as the White Walkers and the Stone Men, but in Westeros, much of the talk of monsters is myth and legend. Things of the past that died long ago with, along with magic. I'd also say The Witcher is much darker, makes you question morality much more than A Song of Ice and Fire. It really takes subjects such as racism and tells an interesting story that has a message without being forced or condescending. They use dwarves and elves as allegories, and it works really well. Both also seem to take a stance on the horror of war and how it's generally bad. Neither seem to glorify it and seem to be quite anti-war. If they do follow the source material closely, there should also be a lot of political intrigue that proved to be one of the key reasons in the early seasons of Game of Thrones becoming so popular. I don't think the political intrigue will hit the levels of Game of Thrones does in its early seasons, but if you're a fan of that, then it might grab your attention. So you can kind of see my point here. On paper, they have a lot in common with slightly different takes on the same ideas. So it's easy to see why some might assume it's the next Game of Thrones, even if most of the mainstream media are just looking at it from they're both fantasy stories with a high budget. Speaking of that, when you consider the sheer amount of money both HBO and Netflix has spent on Game of Thrones and The Witcher, and looking at the first trailer, visually it is looking like a high quality production. But even so, I do think it's too soon to name it the next Game of Thrones. I can see from looking about the internet many issues that fans have brought up that could prevent it from becoming that. What's most alarming for me personally is the writers and fans are already arguing on Twitter in regards to some of the casting choices, which let's say aren't exactly book accurate and technically break the law of the world in big ways. And if you're a fan of that kind of thing, I can kind of understand why you'd be a bit put off by that. This along with leaked set photos already have a large part of the fan base questioning how close to the book this adaption really is going to be, despite the writers saying they're going to stick to the source material. And from what I can see, a lot of Twitter politics 
has pushed away a lot of people as far as I can tell from looking around forums. This isn't really big issues, and I don't think it really is going to affect the quality of the show. But during these early seasons, you rely so much on already established fans of the material. And if you do things that are pushing them away, to be arguing with them, then it's not a very good starting point to go from. Yes, the show is aiming for mainstream success, but you need the fans you're alienating to help you do that. And from what I can tell, they've not done a very good job in doing that. If anything can be learned from Game of Thrones is you need to try and stick to the source material as close as you can to keep fans on side. My take on this is despite what I've seen so far, they do genuinely seem to be trying to stick to the book despite the casting, but they really do need to tread carefully and maybe log off Twitter. When you read the mainstream media, their logic for it being the successor to Game of Thrones is that it's a popular fantasy series with millions of dollars being pumped into it, ignoring the actual content of the story itself how these two stories below the surface are in fact two very different takes on similar subjects. So do I think The Witcher will be popular? Yes. Do I think it will be good and worth a watch? Yes. But I think it's very dangerous to make the Game of Thrones comparison. Netflix should be trying to avoid it rather than encouraging it. Game of Thrones became a cultural phenomenon. I don't think The Witcher will recapture this. I think it will be popular. Yes. Like a lot of Netflix shows, there will be a lot of buzz for a few weeks till it dies down and it's forgotten so the cycle starts again with season two so it will do well and it will be talked about but not to the extent of peak game of thrones with it being nowhere near the cultural impact you'll be unlikely to hear everyone talking about it around the office the next day positioning yourself as the next game of thrones is just setting yourself up for failure when you don't reach that same level of impact i think the witcher will be a great show i'm really looking forward to it but i truly believe that this overhyping threat will leave many disappointed on a side note i'm not a fan of a lot of the netflix shows themselves with the habit of dropping them after a season or two and it does kind of have me worried if we actually see the end of the show which would be a shame if it got cancelled halfway through because once you get past the short stories and get into the main saga from start to finish it is an incredible story with some brilliant characters and moments this was a bit different to my game of thrones lore video but i felt it was worth talking about and something i thought my audience would be interested in with the comparison being made to game of thrones if people want, I might make some Witcher lore videos in the style of my Game of Thrones videos, but these would be extra videos and not replace the Game of Thrones stuff and only be once in a while. If you'd be interested in that, leave a like and a comment below. I'd also be interested in finding out how many of you are actually looking forward to The Witcher and how much you actually know about it.